Hello my friends. It is 8.36 on Thursday morning. It is snowing, like aggressively. And I'm just filming now for this week's video because I had to work late last night and get something done so I couldn't film. So I realized that a lot of the stuff that I've been doing over on my Instagram stories I haven't talked about on here with you guys, first of all. I took a shower this morning so my hair is still a little wet but we're like gray now which is my favorite all my hopes and dreams in a hairdo but I wanted to talk about the things that I typically discuss over on my Instagram story get ready with me's because I've never talked about them on here and if you don't watch me on my Instagram stories then you probably want to see some of these techniques as well so typically when I film in the morning for when I get ready I do a very different technique than I do when I do a full face of makeup with you guys on here where I'm putting on like a full foundation and highlighter and all of that and I don't actually do that every day so I want to kind of just do a really chill get ready with me maybe chat with you a little bit I'm actually gonna start with my eye cream. This is the CeraVe Eye Repair Cream. It is the only eye cream that is National Eczema Seal of Approval approved. So it's the one I use. Also, it's like falling off my face. I would like one that's more hydrating. That's like really almost like wet. However, I don't have one and I'm nervous to try them because like this one's not gonna give me eczema and I'm scared if I try a random one, it's gonna give me eczema and I'm always scared of that. Terrified, really. Oh, I bought the Glow by Auric, which is Samantha Ravendahl. If you don't follow her, she is amazing. She is a YouTuber. She also has a podcast called Approachable, which is really fun and awesome with her best friend, Alyssa, who I also follow, but she has been on the YouTube space for a really long time. Also, it's the morning, so. I have my Dunkin's iced coffee. Um, she's been on the YouTube space for a really long time and she just launched a brand, like a luxury, beautiful brand. And I will use it in a video when I get it because it is so absolutely stunning. I can't wait to try it. It's like a luminizer, but it's more of like a base product rather than like a all over highlight. I'd say kind of like the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. However, I have a feeling it's going to provide a little bit, not of coverage, but of like evening out of the skin tone because that they come in skin tone shades. And then also I keep seeing everybody using it and it kind of like, it's just so hydrating as well as glowy that I believe it's going to make any texture kind of smooth over, which would be really cool. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm excited to start using that like every day. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. And I know that some people like scoop out a chunk and like put all over their face. I literally just do this, get like a small amount and then put it wherever I need to put it. So that way I don't put a ton of product on. One thing that is different about my work get ready with me routine is that I don't actually use a beauty blender like at all which is new like I just started doing this because I don't have setting spray and in the winter my face is really dry so like when I put anything on it it's very hard for me to get it to stay on and not look creepy especially under my eyes so I was watching Katie Jane Hughes who I know I've mentioned on this channel a million times one day and she was talking about how she uses, I need a, to cover my lap and to wipe off all product. She was talking about how she uses a fluffy blending like eyeshadow brush for her concealer and how it puts very minimal product on and also allows her to control where she puts it and only put the coverage where she needs it, which then gives you a sheer application and doesn't allow for as much creasing so I have been doing that and I feel like it works pretty good and so I want to show you that technique today and that's all I do all over my face I mean I do this concealer this is the Becca under eye corrector I always do this concealer I'm putting it on with a brush because I feel like it applies like a more dense amount or I'm gonna get more coverage where when I do it with my finger, I feel like sometimes it doesn't cover the blue as well. 
So the brightness is insane. It's such a great product. I also follow a girl named Jamie Peach Beauty on Instagram, YouTube, whatever. She's super creative, super wonderful. And she also has a Doodles account where she draws on her iPad and Procreate and then sells stickers. And she did a whole plant lover, co lover collection and then also like a makeup lover collection of stickers and I bought them because I couldn't help myself. The stickers, one of them is the Natasha Denona Triochrome palette. Like, come on, I had to get it, it's not my fault. But, you know, plant lover with my pothos, it's always in the background. I'm very zoomed in so you can like actually see what I'm doing today, but yeah, my pothos. So I just put my CoverGirl um, undercover concealer, True Blend undercover on my hand. I take this brush, I wish I had, like I would use one of my other blending brushes, but I use those for my eyes all the time, so I don't wanna use them, but this one isn't as dense as I would like it to be for this kind of application, but this is the fluffy blending brush. And so what I do is I put it in the edge over here. I know it's really hard to see because it's focusing on my face. So this is called priming the brush. So it's kind of similar to like a painting technique where you're going to get product into the bristles and you're going to work it in before you put it on the canvas because then you're not going to have like a lot of product sitting on top of the brush that you're just putting straight on your face because that's not the point. So then I take what I primed which you can see is not a lot, I still have a lot on here, and I start to gently fluff that under my eye and around the top of my eye. And what's really nice is that this concealer has a lot of coverage. So to do this technique and to not have a lot of product on your brush works because you're still getting coverage, especially like an everyday coverage that is going to hide any imperfections that you may not want to see, any darkness, any under eye bags, any dark circles. You're still gonna get that coverage without getting the overabundance of product and the amount that I'm using is so much less that it's not creasing under my eyes, which is like really the benefit. I also have been going to the gym in the morning because I've always wanted to be able to like get up in the morning and exercise like before anybody else is awake and like just like get up early and be like motivated. And that's always been something that I've been interested in trying to do. So Sean and I went and signed me up for a gym membership and I did it. And now I am going in the morning. On Monday I had like a rough morning. I started my womanly part of the month and my body just didn't want to be, be up. It didn't want to go to the gym on Monday morning, so I didn't. But And then yesterday I woke up and my car was covered in like... Um, so I went to the gym Monday night. But yesterday I woke up and my car was like covered in snow and I was like, oh, no. So Tuesday morning I went as well, but then, yeah. Yesterday, since it was covered in snow, I didn't go. I like looked outside. I had even gotten out of bed already. And I looked outside out the window and I was like... Not today. I'm, I'm not gonna go clean my car off at 5.30 in the morning. Like, that's just not happening. So I didn't, but we did today. It wasn't snowing when I woke up or I probably wouldn't have gone. But yeah, so that's, if you see any like redness on my face, it's residual from going to the gym. I get very red. But yeah, so I'm just doing the same thing with the blending brush, a little bit of product, just lightly fluffing it around my face. I just, I wanna start really prepping my skin better. So I need to look into more I want to get a nice like hydrating serum that isn't going to cause me eczema. I want to get a nice, like I said, hydrating eye cream because I think the more I hydrate my under eyes, the better that the creasing will be, which is why I've been doing my eye cream before makeup every day in the morning, like right before I apply it. So yeah, just little things that I want to try to incorporate into my routine to make it better. So then when I set, I still use my powder, but I just use a flat Blend, um, packing brush like I would use if I was setting my eyes after putting down a primer or a concealer. And I just put a little bit on there, tap it off, and then I go over any spots with my hands before I set them. So I will just push the product in with the oils of my fingertips into my skin. And then I take my little brush and I set the individual forehead lines. <laughs> It doesn't work great, like I'm still gonna have creasing because I'm not setting it with my sponge like I normally do. Disregard that sound, somebody's texting me. 
And although my phone's on silent, my iPad is not. But yeah, so I set my lines. I'm still gonna crease because it's not as much product as I get with the Beauty Blender, but I just, it's easier to not have to wet the Beauty Blender. It's easier to provide less cakiness under my eye with the blending brush. I very much enjoy it, so that's where we're at. I'm just tapping, and then I actually have been taking my brush and going like from the outside in to set the creases under my eye. I feel like that gets the powder into the areas that are creasing better rather than going this way because like pushing it in, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but that's just what I've been doing. All right. So I have my Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzer in the shade Butta Biscuit. I'm gonna take my little, I believe this is like the contouring brush from Real Techniques. And I just dip it in there. I've used this a lot. I don't think it's my favorite cream bronzer. It's just easy to dip in versus my Milk Bronzing Stick, but I do like my Milk Bronzer more than this one. So I'm starting on my temple because I really wanna keep the bronzer high. I don't wanna go super low. So I start on my temple area and I work down. So I'm not like depositing a ton of product here and then accidentally blending it lower than I want it to be. And I just go around and blend, go back in, get some more from up here. And this cream bronzer is, especially when you don't have like a wicked intense base that you're worried about moving around, like my concealer is not gonna go anywhere. I have barely any on. So just using a like easy brush, I'm like essentially blending it on like it's like powder, which this product does a great job of doing anyways. Okay, now I have this new, it's closed in the package, so I need my scissors to get it open. So there was a lot of people talking about the Honest Beauty cheek, cream cheek blushes and I had never seen them in Target, even though they carry Honest Beauty. And the last time I was there, they had one, or they had three shades, and I got one of them. Can't get into the box. I should have done this before. So I bought one. Um, I got the shade Rose Pink. They had a corally one, but it looked a little bright, and I was nervous because I'm more of like a peachy kind of girl. Okay, so this is the outer packaging. Open it up and there's your cream. So I'm gonna take this stipple brush. This is an e.l.f. small stipple brush and I'm just gonna dip it right in there. And I'm also gonna like work it into the back of my hand. Once again, just like priming the brush and making sure I don't have too much on it before I go into my cheeks. I'm gonna start up on my highest point of my cheekbone. Pick up what's on my hand and keep going. I got a lot of excess up here. So now I'm just going back in with my original cream bronzer brush and blending them in together. I feel like that's a really subtle blush that I am excited about. I feel like I could also put it on with a beauty blender and I would probably go on a little bit more opaque, which would be nice, but I do enjoy the subtle look that I can get. Just putting a little bit more so I don't lose the pink entirely. So although I know most people aren't gonna buy this palette, I just wanted to put one of these two shades all over my eye in like a super quick, easy, everyday look just to give you an idea of what I was talking about in my last video. So I'm actually gonna take Garmin, which is the second shade in, not the lightest, it's the second shade. And a big fluffy blender. I'm just going to dip my brush in there. And I'm going to start by swiping it on my lid and then blending into my crease. It's going to be the easiest eye look. Nothing too dramatic. Packing it on to get it to deposit and then blending, blending, blending. And I know I reference like one shadow eye looks. I'm just going to take my plain blending brush. With nothing on it. I always reference one shadow uh, eye looks. And I feel like I don't ever do them on my channel, so I feel like this is a good opportunity to show you what a one shadow look can do. I'm just flicking it outwards a little bit. Going back in with my 
Like this is a little bit darker than you would have to go. You can always use Diatonic, which is the light peachy coral shade. And that's it. So that's my whole eye look. So then I would take a more tapered pointed brush, like a flatter shader brush, dip into the same shade and just go right under the lash line. bring it up and over into that angled shape that I like personally for my eyeshadow. Then original brush. I'm blending it into my blush so it kind of just fades away into the blushy bronzy temple that I have going on over here. And that's the whole thing. So then I'm just going to do the other eye really quick and I'll come back on with mascara and eyebrows and we'll talk about our lips. <sighs> All right, my brows are on and wow, brows are my least favorite part of makeup. I don't, I will never, I don't think I'll ever enjoy it, but we're going to do a little everyday lip. I'm going to put on some chapstick quick because my lips are always dry and I'm about to lip line them. And having chapstick under it really helps me with getting the lip liner to like smooth on really nicely. But before I go crazy with this, so I've been doing like a lip liner lip gloss thing. I know that's not long wearing, but I'm sitting at my desk in my office at home, so I'm not super worried about the long wear. That's the only reason I have been doing it. If I were to work in an office where I'm sitting in the office for nine hours a day, I would probably still be wearing a liquid lipstick. Another shade that I've been wearing a lot again is the Huda Beauty liquid matte in the shade bombshell it's a really good nude i wore it yesterday and it was it's just really nice it is matte it's long wearing it'll stay on really nicely but it's not really drying so it is kind of comfortable um so i'm gonna put on this lip liner <clears throat> so this lip liner i didn't tell you what it was before i put it on my lips this is the makeup forever artist color pencil in the shade completely sepia 602 I really enjoy it for every day if I'm going for a lighter look, but the other color I've been using a lot, which you can see the difference in shade, is 604 Up and Down Tan. These are expensive, but they're the ones that I've been using every day, so I wanted to talk about them. I'm pretty sure I used this one on Tuesday with this exact same lip gloss. So this lip gloss is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Moon, or 003. It is a dupe for the Fenty Gloss Bomb that everybody loves, and it smells really good, tastes really nice, and it is gorgeous. It's at the drugstore. It's awesome. So just put this all over, Tucker's just wandering around out there. So now my lip gloss is on and I am done. Normally I would set my face, but like I said, I don't have setting spray, so this is my work look. I'm going to zoom you out a hair. There we go. I have to wait for it to stop shaking again. I don't know why the base is so shaky all of a sudden on my tripod. I'm not sure why it's doing that or why it's acting that way, but it has been. So anyways, this is my everyday look. My hair is like this because I showered and had to get ready quick, but this is what I've been kind of doing for work. The base technique, whether I use a powder bronze or powder blush or not, but the concealer and the setting powder is what I've been doing every day for about two weeks now and I really enjoyed it. It makes the creasing under my eyes a lot less, the heaviness on my face a lot less and I do enjoy it a lot more. As for the eyes, I just wanted to show you a really easy way to use a colorful palette. It could be any palette, not the Natasha Denona palette specifically, but any colorful palette to use a moderately neutral shade out of it to create a really easy look. You could also do this with any color. You could do a blue, you could do a green, you could do a yellow. Like this is super easy. It's just you take one shade, you get it on a big fluffy blending brush and you just pack it on, swip, blend it away. Using this was just because I chose a darker shade. You really, if you chose a lighter shade, you could use just the one brush and not have to dip into a clean blending brush to blend the edges. I just wanted to make sure that they blended well because it was a slightly deeper tone than like a standard light peach. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is just how excited I am watching all of these makeup brands come out. And I know I've said this before, but 
It is my dream to have a makeup line someday and watching how excited Sam was talking on our podcast about the process of making it all was so exciting to me that like, gosh, I can't imagine like the day that I get to do that would be so cool and I'm so excited to get to do it someday. But I didn't mention that before when I was talking about Auric and I wanted to bring it up. But if you haven't watched that podcast episode of her talking about the creation of the brand and how long it took and how long she's had this dream and like the parts and pieces of the packaging and creating the formulas and all that, it's so interesting if you're into makeup or product development, you know, naming, I, it was wicked cool. Anyways, I'm gonna go get to work. I just wanted to say goodbye. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Caitlin underscore makeup where I do looks typically like this every week where we get ready with some music on my Instagram stories. I post it later at night, but it is me getting ready in the morning more typically unless I do a Sunday night one, but most of the time I'm too lazy on Sunday to do it. And then you can like and comment on this video, subscribe to my channel. I would really... Ew! <coughs> <coughs> I would really appreciate it if you wanted to subscribe to my channel and hang out with me some more and watch my videos and enjoy me as a human being. But I'm gonna go, get ready for work, get my computer going, clean up this hot mess that I created. I hope to see you here next week where I will finally be doing my, my makeup collection. I just didn't have time to film me opening the furniture piece and showing you everything when I was doing work until 10 o'clock last night. So I'm gonna go, I hope you had a wonderful day. Love you all so much. See you next week on third Friday at 5 p.m. Bye. This is my wonderful up close thing that we do every week. And this week I want you to tell me the word peach or the emoji, if you know what I mean.